Welcome to Money Congos, where we discuss personal finance and investment tips. We are committed to helping people create wealth and achieve financial freedom. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Clubhouse and Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube and podcast. Alright then, let's head into today's conversation. Hello, Dennis. I've sent you the invite to be co-host. Okay, great. Hi, Adam. How are you? I'm good, please. Are you? I'm also good. Bye, bye, bye. How has your week been so far? Uh, it's It's been okay. <laughs> Still early days in 2023, so... Oh, okay. Nice. So I hope you're prepared for today. Yes. <laughs> Nice, 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 nice. Okay, so we wait a little bit and then I think we could, uh, we could start, let's say, some two, three minutes. Yeah. All right. Let's try and get some people on board and see. Hello, Mimi. You're welcome. I've, I've sent you an invite to join as co host. If you're in a good place, kindly accept so that we can move on. Anyway, so good evening, everyone. Um, Today we are having a very interesting discussion. And uh, I would soon hand over to our host for tonight. Um, Our host is Dennis Dennis Kwame Kote. He's an intern with Money Kumbos. And um, yeah. I think he will introduce himself better, so I just want to hand over <laughs> straight to Dennis. Dennis, Hi, Adam. your audience. Thank you very much. So I think we would get right to business. Good evening once again to everyone, wherever you are listening from. And welcome to the second Money Combo session of 2023. Um, thank you so much for joining me. And a really big thank you to you. Uh, loyal listeners who make time to tune in every week to listen, learn, and grow financially. If it's also your first time, a big welcome to you, and we hope you continue to stay with us and join us every week for our conversations. Um, my name is Dennis, as already said, and I'm a new intern with the Malikon Host team, and I'll be hosting today's session. We will tackle a topic which, at this point in time, bothers a lot of parents, workers, and self-employed folks, how to survive the 61 days of January. So don't go anywhere, we will begin very shortly. So um, Adam, I would like to hear from you. Uh, last week, we spoke about our goals for 2023. I know it's probably too early to ask, but how far are you making any progress? Oh, <laughs> how far, dear? We are, we are still... Hello. Hello, Adam. Yeah, but I couldn't hear you very clearly. But I think you 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 were talking about um, the fact that we talked about our goals for 2023. Yeah, yeah it's actually on course um, as we discussed last week. Um, it's very important that it's broken down, and then each day, as you step out and you move on. You are working towards it. So, yeah, we are working towards these goals that we have set. And uh, as you said, it's very, very early days yet. So, um, there's, it's now that we are doing the work. So, hopefully, down the line, we start to see the results. Yeah. Right. That's very powerful. Hello, Mimi. How are you doing today? Hi, Dennis. I'm doing well, my goodness, please. Thank you very much. Um, so, same question. We, we spoke about our goals last week, and I want to know whether it's it's moving or <laughs> the progress. <laughs> is as as Adam says, small small. We are we are on it. <laughs> right. There are a lot of distractions, but we are we are still on it. That's very nice. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's let's get right to business. Before we begin, a quick reminder to our audience to check out our podcast wherever you listen to your podcast. Just search for Money Convos 
subscribe, and then listen to any of our conversations at your own convenience, whether in your car heading to work or just enjoying your leisure time. If you're also a lady looking for tailored investment advice for yourself, um, kindly check out Investment Friend on Instagram. Please also tweet this space onto your timeline to allow other people to join in their conversations. So um, let's, let's dive right in. The 61 days of January, the seemingly longest month of the year. What's, what's the whole idea behind this say? Your, your thoughts, Evan? Hello, Adam. Hello, Dennis. Okay, please do get um, It looks like I can't. I cannot hear you very well. Can you please go over? Like, okay. It seems like you're a bit strange here. All right. So I was asking about the saying that the 61 days of January, the seemingly longest month of the year. What What do you think is the whole idea behind it? Okay. So, yeah. Um, January always seems to be a very long month. Um, I think for two reasons. I mean, there may be other reasons and everything, but... I think one of the main reasons is um, is because a lot of major bills come due early in January. And uh, for example, those who have children are paying school fees. Uh, for now, like schools have resumed when you have to make these payments. Um, and uh, I think another reason too is that um, a lot of expenditure is made um, during the Christmas festivities, leaving people with quite a little amount of money left, that if there's anything left at all um, for the month of January. So it gives it that illusion of, um, you know, when you are going through a tough time, or even like, let's say you are not able to sleep at night, or something is going, you see that the night is so long, and the same way, that illusion, the month doesn't seem to get to an end where you would get some reprieve in terms of getting some income coming in. So I believe that is one of the main reasons, or I mean, these are some of the reasons why January feels like it lasts forever. Yeah, hello, Dennis. It looks like you are muted. Powerful, powerful. Um, thank you very much, Adam. Mimi, your thoughts on the 61 days of January? Yeah, um, <laughs> to add to what Adam has said, I think Adam, uh, hey, sorry, oh my God. I'm sorry, to add to what Adam had said, I don't know if he spoke about this, I didn't hear, but I think January comes with a lot of bills. People are paying school fees, people are paying rent. Um, they are doing one thing or the other. At the same time, um, it's happening just after December, which for most people is the month where they spend the most. So I think generally it feels like a very tight month and your hope is that your January salary comes as soon as possible so that you get relief. And as, <laughs> as, as Adam said, when you are waiting for something, it takes forever, right? Um, but I feel like sometimes if you are prepared, if you plan for that school fees or you plan for that rent, and you have just a bit of money at least to survive um, January, it doesn't feel as long. I mean, next week, Saturday is 20th. <laughs> and the Saturday after, I mean, the week after I get paid. So, I mean, it's good news. <laughs> So it's not as long, but I think that it also comes with um, uh, looking ahead and seeing, okay, what bills would will be coming up during that time and then uh, planning for it so that you don't feel like you have to empty your whole account just to make those payments. It's easier said than done, especially in these days where disposable income is not so high. But I, I think that planning helps solve this one. That's very, powerful. That's very powerful. So, um, one experience for me, I heard from my colleague that January is traditionally a financially dry month. But I don't know whether you agree whether it's generally a dry month or lack of effort on our side causes things to be dry. Months. What are your thoughts on that? And it's your sound is quite bad. 
Hello. Yeah. Am I audible? Yeah, you are audible, but it's quite difficult to hear you and it's making some chit 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 sound. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, like we said, January seems dry because of the events before and during that month. You get it. I think it's the month that comes after a month where you have spent too much and still have to spend so much. Today I saw some man post about, you know, school fees, having to pay school fees. I know people who have to cough um, out about 20 something thousand this month for school fees alone because they have a number of kids. Imagine the same person doesn't have a house and has to pay um, rent around this time. I mean, that's a lot of pressure, right? So I, I think that it's not like the month itself is, <laughs> is, is bad. It's just the events preceding and during that month, depending on when you rented, when your kids... I mean, everybody's child, who have, you have to definitely pay school fees. Um, in general, whether it's the beginning of an academic year or it's a continuation, it's a new term, you just need me have to pay school fees. So I think it's those things that make it difficult. That's very powerful. Um, please, am I audible now? Yes, it's better now. So we've mentioned some causes of the difficulty we face in, in January, primarily because of the major bills that are coming due and also the heavy expenditure which occurs during the festivities. Now, I would like to hear personal experiences from you, Adam or Mimi, about how you have um, navigated these challenges during January. Do you have some specific steps you take that help you navigate through these difficult times? Okay, so let, let me take it first. And so for me, at least for the past few years, I earn a 13th month in December and then I earn my salary. So I think that the 13th month is a chile money. And even that I divide it into two, I try to save as much as I can out of that money. But I mean, being that I have kids that go to school, you have to give to teachers, nanny, all sorts of people. So um, I, I remember last year I was planning to save at least half. I think I was able to do 40% and um, because my the list of people or my, let me say my gift list, I had to add some people to it. So I remember being able to do 50%. So that left 50% from the 13th man. Then my December salary there, I don't touch it at all. Um, my yes, because I know that January will come and like every other month, it will come with its expenses. So I don't touch that salary at all. In terms of bulk expenses I have had to do in January, I personally don't pay <laughs> school fees. I have other responsibilities. And I think that those responsibilities are a bit more spread out. But with my husband, we decided that every month we'll put aside a certain amount of money. So when school fees period comes, it's not now that you are going to borrow. You just, for example, if the school fees is 2,000 Ghana cities a term, okay, you multiply that by three, you are paying three times, so that's 6,000. So divide 6,000 by 12, that's 500. So you can set a direct debit of 500 to, um, what do you call it, an account um, maybe you can do a bit more because of inflation, so maybe 700, right, to an account every month. So by the time um, school fees time is up, you have 700 times 12, I think that's uh, 8,400 8, for the year. You know, it makes you feel very relaxed. And this is something that you can start as soon as your kids, you give birth to your kids. Because if you start early, you have like a buffer just in case there are some months that you cannot um, do that. So I think that helps a lot. To be honest, rent is not something that I have done before. I haven't paid for accommodation before. Either I've gone to pay somewhere or it's free or something. I haven't paid for accommodation before. But I know that can also be very challenging, given that if you are renting somewhere for, let's say, 1000 1005 they are taking you know, um, 
12,000, 24,000 at a go. That, that's huge. So it, it can be a bit challenging. But sometimes we get lump sums, right? Um, for maybe a side business you did or um, uh, one thing or the other. It's important to know that, okay, rent is coming up and this um, lump sum I'm getting can help me achieve my goal. So rather than quickly blow it because brewing up. We remember that you have to pay your landlord. So I think careful planning um, it helps to, you know, reduce the burden for for January. Yeah, um, Dennis was having a little challenge, so he's he will come on soon. Yeah, so I think for myself to, um, just like Mimi mentioned, I start to prepare quite early on. Um, for December expenses in particular, you know, when you are sure that um, you know that certain expenses are going to come. So every month, I put money aside for the end of the year. So even if you are putting aside 100 CDs every month, by the end of the year, you would have done 1,200. And that's quite good, which you can use to do certain, make certain expenses. So, like, the way we even did the 91 Days to Christmas Challenge, that was something meant to use for um, Christmas expenses, basically, so that January I'm not surprised, okay, by kind of bills that show up. And also, um, like Mimi also said, um, I think another thing that worries um, a lot of people sometimes is we forget that our December salary is for spending in January to take us through the, the month of January. So I always make sure that I put that money aside. I, it's not money that I touch at all. So that in January, we know that we are going with this amount of money to take us through the month. So um, basically, those are some of the strategies I use. We know Christmas is going to come. And we know now, especially, we are always talking about dirty December and what have you. So why don't we plan ahead of time and then when the time comes, you don't spend outside of a budget. Yeah. So then that's basically what the, the strategy I've been using. Yeah. That's very awesome. Um, thank you so much, Mimi and Adam. So basically, careful planning by putting money aside will help you navigate through the difficult times in January. And it's tried and tested. You can also try that too. So if you just joined in, you are speaking on how we can survive the long 61 days of January. We've talked about the causes of that, which being the major bills, and then the school fees and other bills that come to you. But you've also talked about the expenditure, which comes as a result of the spending we make in the festivities. Then we've also spoken about how we can navigate through December by careful planning the months prior to that and also setting money aside to make sure we are catered for. Um, so, talking about January, we are 11 days into this one. And that first paycheck to sort things out feels miles out of reach. And then we also know, as it's already established, January comes with a rush of payment obligations. So, um, what tips do you have for anyone out there seeking help? Um, Mimi, will you take this one? Well, I didn't hear the question too well, but I guess you are asking, okay, we are in January, what can you do? Um, I think that if you look at what you have in terms of maybe you ended, December ended and you had maybe 500 Ghana cities to survive instead of the usual 1,000, um, you have to start thinking about how you can, first of all, cut down costs. So maybe you pick an Uber to work, maybe for the month of January, you have to pick Trotsky. If you pick Trotsky, maybe you would have to pitch with somebody who, if, if you, you uh, what do you call it? You uh, pick Trotsky, maybe you can ask and see if there's somebody in your area that you know lives around, then you can at least ride with the person for a month you know, at least. Um, if, if you you were eaten, we are doing 20, 21 days of prayer, right? So maybe you can sacrifice your lunch and, and say that you are fasting 
fasting for the, 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 the what do you call it, the year 2023. Just look at ways to cut down your courses. I mean, the reality is that money is not there. If you, I'm, I'm not for asking people for money. I, I prefer people to give money than for you to go and ask. But anyway, I mean, if uh, it becomes critical and you, you have, you have people who trust you, who will be willing to give you money either for free or something. That's fine. But me, it, it won't be my goal to I'll rather uh, manage what I have. You know, and because everybody is suffering, you are not the only one. So you don't want to be a burden on on other people. Um, this this is not a very good time to uh, take loans. This is not a very good time to take loans um, because interest rates are very high. And so while we are under pressure for money for all sorts of reasons, let's be careful the kind of financial decisions we take. Um, at this time so that they don't come and bite us for the rest of the year. There are decisions that you can take that can mess up your whole 2023. So I'll say that rather try and squeeze and manage. But if you have to pay school fees or one of those things and you haven't prepared and you go and take a loan, um, you pay the loan, but you need to do something drastically to ensure that that doesn't happen again because it will happen again if you are not intentional about it because remember that the money that you should have been setting aside for that you'll be using it to pay for the loan so you need to generate you either need to reduce your expenses significantly or generate some income so that you set it aside so that next year 2024 it won't be the situation otherwise you retire and you realize that you've just been collecting loans to uh, pay school fees. I used to work at the bank for national service and it was one of the things I thought was not a very good financial decision, especially because, you know, school fees is recurring, not like masters that you do it maybe one or two years and you are done. This is like, you are going to be paying this for the next 18 years. So you, you need to figure out how you can make it uh, work for you. Powerful, powerful. And then, any any tips on how we can navigate January, even though we are, we are in 11 days in January? Any tips? Yeah, I think I side with what Mimi said. Um, one of the things we can do is, um, I think a, a very important thing is that, okay, you are already in the middle of a situation. Um, I think you just have to assess your situation better and look and try and see what are the immediate um commitments you have to make and what are the immediate resources you have that can meet up those um, commitments. I think that's the first step. Then going on, um, is there a way I would want to look at some of the must, uh, the things you must pay? For example, if it's a school fees, are there payment plans that probably the school has that you can take advantage so that you can um, lower the pressure that you have on you. Is there a possibility to defer some of the payments till probably after the month? And like there are some advantages, like or there are some disadvantages to that also. But at least you get yourself some breathing space so that you don't enter into debt, like uh, Mimi was saying. So you could explore chances of. Um, deferring some payments if it's possible. In some cases, there's, there's, there's no negotiation whatsoever. Then it means that those expenses must be paid and probably you might have to go for a loan or a soft loan or whatever. But even though as much as possible, we are discouraging those things. Um, if you are already in the middle of a situation like that and you would have to make do then um, that might be your last resource. But like Mimi said, then you must make sure that you take concrete steps now that we are in January from now up to December so that this doesn't repeat itself next year, God willing. And also, um, I think that it's, it's, it's a month where you would have to downsize if you have realized that you are in the middle and you have a lot of commitment, yet the finances are not enough. So Mimi mentioned a number of them. Is it possible to stop picking the Uber 
Is it possible to um, patch with somebody while you're going to work? What What are the options you have? I think these are some of the places uh, we can make sure that we look at where can you cut out probably some subscriptions for this month. You might have to just cancel them, especially looking that um, the exchange rate is not very, very, very favorable. Um, it might not be it might be a good time to look at some of these subscriptions and to surprise you how much money uh, these things take. So just make sure that you, you you study carefully what is going on and then uh, take advantage of opportunities where you can cut out costs. And then I think we should be fine. Like Mimi said, the month will soon end. That's fantastic. Um, I just want to read something Paulina has put somewhere. Um, she said, one of the things I did in anticipation for the 61 days of January was to stock up on food and then also set aside my TNT so I wouldn't have to worry about those two budget items. So she has strategies for her necessities so that um, at least she can eat and go to work till uh, she receives her next paycheck. That's fantastic, that's fantastic. Um, I think I, I really loved the contribution from Adam. The part where you mentioned us analyzing our payment plans. I mean, we already know that our spending power has decreased. And the only way we can survive is to look out for the best deals. So if it's our insurance, maybe we can assess the type of insurance we are paying for. My parents, I have an experience with my parents recently where they were paying for the comprehensive insurance plan, but then they saw that they weren't really getting best value out of it. So just this month, they sat down and analyzed their, their spending and then decided to go for a rather lower one, a lower part of the insurance. Um, Adam also spoke about the subscription. We will have a lot of subscriptions ranging from our DSTVs to our music subscriptions on Spotify, Apple Music. We can analyze that those ones too. And we also have the school fees. Now, a lot of schools come up with plans to help you pay your school fees. For instance, in my school, you are allowed to pay portions of your school fees, which will enable you to undertake your academic studies. So you can also explore that to help you navigate through these hard times. Um, thank you so much for your contributions, Mimi and Adem. So, um, Elikem, hi. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, just when I joined, I heard Adem say that Mimi said the month will be over soon. Who told Mimi those lies? Mimi, what been lying to you? Hey, I said my salary will be coming soon. Ah, I didn't say it so Ah, okay. <laughs> you, 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 Bob. You bob so for her the month to end soon. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> to end soon. You understand? Rana, let me see. Uh -huh. Somebody somebody that I I, I I process her salary is not in this in this show right now. But now right now think just thinking about this conversation that we are having, I'm wondering, should I pay her salary ahead of time? Or I should pay it a little later or you know, so she has to be nice to me this week. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. Please do do catch me up on where we've gotten to, All and right. see where I can make some input. All right. So uh, Mimi and then Adam were giving us tips on how they think we can navigate to January, even though we are eleven days into it. So Mimi mentioned us cutting costs, and then also looking out for our financial obligations, not taking loans during these hard times. Adam also mentioned. Also, we look into our payment plans. Also, making sure you should cut costs on some of the things we do during this month and analyzing our whole financial plan to make sure we don't fall in the same fit in the subsequent months. So, that's where we've reached. I don't know whether you also have some little tips on how we can navigate through the month. Yeah, I have, I have an idea. Um, something. You, you may have heard the saying in, in a can, I'll say it in a can and translate it. It said, it's near dinner, boga be full trotro. When it gets to the hard times, the boga or the rich man will, will, will climb a trotro. I mean, will take public transport. 
Um, so you, what it gets you thinking about is in these tough times, what can you do that will be out of your way? One of them I'm realizing is start a side hustle. So someone who has a car like Adam's car, uh -huh, like those Picantos I-20s, uh -huh, maybe now may be a time that, yes, you're a banker and all that, but Saturday, maybe you should do Uber Eats or something. Even if you don't want to deal with people, do some kind of delivery or try and do some a few trips just to pay for your a portion of your fuel. I think that's can that's an option that people may be considering or think creatively. Maybe you've always said you don't have time to do something or to uh, review people's CV for a fee. Just get creative. When you are very hungry, you can be motivated. And um, I know we are not talking at this point. It's too late to be talking about the budget because your January budget you should have done it long ago. But I've realized that uh, personally, I do. I always assess my budget when my money is about to finish. Hey, because when my money is about to finish, you know what they say, penny wise, pound foolish. At that point, I'm penny wise. So I can make my budgets with a very clear head. So And, and I can get aggressive and say, well, next month, they don't do this. Next month, new Heineken, only club. You understand? So um, you can also use that same hungry mindset to think up some ideas. In fact, I kid you not, a couple of weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, I was getting very broke before my mother sent me some money. And I was and I was thinking, okay, for the next week, I'll go and talk to this person to make me to let me use her car to do DoorDash or to do something or, you know, just, and then just after I've gotten some money to keep body and soul together, I'm like, ah, was I, was I really thinking about going to that person? That person would just give me an earful and I don't have a good time. But you see, when I was desperate, my brain cleared all the obstacles and figured out. But when I got a little comfortable, I started saying, oh, it's not it's not that deep. It's not worth it going through all that drama, you know. So especially for those who are hungry right now, start using the hunger to uh, figure out a way of generating income. Thank you so much, Elikum. That was a really nice comment. So... Basically, if you have to downgrade to survive, don't hesitate. Your survival is more important. So thank you so much. Um, a kind reminder that if you have any comments or questions for us, you can either send the questions to my DM or the DM of the Money Combos account. We can read them for you. So the point about bulk shopping, I mean, we've already stated it will really go a long way to help you navigate through the, the month. And Mimi, do you have any steps on how you should shop in bulk, which would help you navigate through the month? Uh, well, I mean, <clears throat> in December, some of us went to shop and bought rice and all sorts of things. So I guess that as you are eating in December, remember that leave one bag of rice for January. So it's just like, um, Paulina said, right, um, what do you call it? We, we do a lot of shopping, but sometimes we or we buy in bulk because you are buying to give out, you are buying because you are anticipating that there will be people coming and stuff like that. But just remember to set part aside um, for January. Um, even if you are able to get good deals, don't chop all in December. I think when it comes to tricks with bulk buying, maybe Sarah will be in a in a better um, will be better to give tips. Um, I I used to buy quarterly, um, but because prices were changing significant significantly, I realized that maybe buying things as and when I have the money makes more sense. And so I've paused on that for a bit. Uh, I may go back, um, but basically. And um, when you buy things in bulk, it's, you, you are... Okay, so when I buy things in bulk, I don't go to the nearest convenience store to buy because most of the time it's very expensive. Because it's a delivery thing, I'll go to the market um, and then you get better deals um, in the market. Um, yeah, but I think that right now that ship has sailed, right? So me, I'm enjoying some of my things from December, some of the rice and tuna and the rest that <laughs> were given. That, that's what I'm still chopping, the leftovers of 
the party sentence. So, um, <clears throat> bog mine now, there is some way. But maybe Sarah can, can, can tell us about it. She's been going to town every day, so. <laughs> Fantastic. I hear you. Um, Adam, any, any thoughts? Did you buy in bulk this month or before this month? Oh, me, I think, like, uh, Mimi was saying, the bulk buying ship that has sailed already. If you are now going to buy in bulk, <laughs> you are lit. <laughs> right. But uh, but I think one of the things to do, basically, all the time, is, is a good thing to buy in bulk because you then are able to save a little bit more. And then, um, like, when you buy things in bulk, the cost per unit item usually is, is, is lower than if you should buy at retail rates. So I, I feel um, one of the things we need to do all the time is to make sure that um, we are buying in bulk. So if you haven't already, this is not, I don't think it might be a very good time to go and buy in bulk because you might end up committing a lot of money into one or two things. So I would say go for the necessities. What are the necessities for the, the month? Okay. And get them. So you also don't lock up your your limited cash that you have in items and then you don't have money in case of anything happening or in case you need to do something. I hope you understand. So you don't want to go and buy, this is not a time you are going to buy 10 maybe bags of rice uh, with the small money that you have. And then now tomorrow you wake up and your prepaid is finished. And then all your money has been locked in rice. Okay, So it should, if you are buying in bulk, it should be a deliberate for, um, planning and a lot of thinking should go into that ahead of time so that you don't rush in the middle of the month at this time to go and do that bulk shopping where your monies are a bit slow and then you are, you'll be stressed out in case something um, comes up a few um, days or weeks down the line. So if there's something about bulk shopping, it should have been done already, but hopefully probably at the end of the month, when people's incomes are coming in, their salaries are coming in and all that, then that could be a good time to plan for the future. That's my my take on that. Yeah, that's wonderful, Alekan. Yeah, so mine is not exactly on bulk buying, but it's on bulk doing something else. Carpooling. So start uh, instead of you driving your car all the way to the central business district or wherever you are going. If your neighbor is also heading that way, maybe you can come to an agreement and you help the person buy fuel instead of both of you buying fuel. I think that's a good way to save some money. But that also comes res with responsibilities. Please be on time. Okay. Don't don't delay the person. Yeah, sure. Um, since I joined Leeds, not sure if some of these things have, men have been mentioned, but perhaps I'll, I'll just drop some points and then see if there are any thoughts on them as, as I go on. The first thing is, uh, when Mimi was talking uh, about bulk buying, also got me th uh, eating leftovers and all that, got me thinking about two things. One, cook at home. If you have food, cook at home. For me, what I did was, uh, because in December I knew that my money was about to finish, I went, I took somebody's um, BJ's shopping card and went to buy stuff on, on discount, like, yeah, at a discount price, and then carried them and came to store them in my freezer. Right. And so this 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 month is just cooking. So that I'm doing. It's not nothing fancy. Okay. Nothing fancy. That can save you a lot of money. Alternatively, another strategy from my uh, and a lot of the bachelors can relate to this. If you don't like cooking, when you have to go out, when you yeah, when you go out with your friends or you have to buy food outside, aim for restaurants that give very large portions. All right so that you can get two meals out of one plate. It's easier for me because I don't eat much. You can see from my, my, my picture, I'm a very chingalinga guy. You see, so uh, you can use that as, as a way to make sure that you are getting two meals out of one. All right. Um, yeah. Any, any, perhaps any thoughts from my fellow speakers before I move on to other points? 
Thank you, Elikem. So, eat at home. That's Elikem's message. It's important to cook at home and sit well at these times. Uh, Mimi, you also have any thoughts on what Elikem said? Yeah, some people can finish all the food. <laughs> Maybe, maybe those people should start doing prayer and fast. <laughs> um, anyway, I, I think that um, you, you, sorry, Dennis, I didn't hear the question. I'm tempted to set my own question, please. The question again. Okay, so I was asking whether you also have any thoughts on what Elikem said that's cooking at home. Oh, yeah, cooking at home is. It's cool. It's a it's a good way to, you know, spend less money. And um, recently, me I like sandwiches. And by the way, I'm fancy, so I like cheese and all those fancy things. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I was I just made like a wrap at at home, and with my cheese and my you know, my yoma. and I was like, ah, we cry if I went to buy it. Cry, they charge me some, you know, eighty. 80 um, Ghana CDs or 100 Ghana CDs. But that same money could get me at least, if not all, most of the, um, you know, um, ingredients. And I can actually eat it for a while, not just one day. And then it's, I, 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 I don't think I do a bad job with making those sandwiches. So, yeah, I think that um, it's a good way to uh, reduce money. Um, my office, I get free food, so maybe a few of us also have that. And if you get free food at work, maybe if the food is made, you can divide it into two and make one supper so that you don't need to think about supper or make it breakfast. <laughs> I don't know, whichever way. So I know some, some companies allow, some companies give their people free food. So just take your bowl and put your rice inside shamelessly. And, 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 and take it home and make it to your supper. Um, you just want to make the most of every resource you have, right? Um, until at least you get your same salary, your next salary. But I even think that how you survive in general, it's not like, it's not just general. You can use those same skills or those same tips throughout the year to ensure that you are able to uh, make the most of whatever income that you get. So it's not just a January thing. If you did it in January and it worked, why not? You can also apply it in the other month so that uh, maybe you've told yourself you want to travel or you want to do this or do that so that you'll be able to do those things. So let's not just be financially prudent in January because we are broke. But <laughs> whatever we learn from January, let's take it into the, the other months. That's awesome. That's awesome. Pelican. Yeah. And my, my last two points I'm thinking about uh, relate to buying and selling. Again, if, if you have any unwanted items and it's coming from Christmas, a lot of times people receive gifts they don't like. Maybe you receive some nice designer uh, perfume and you are, you are like me, you don't like using perfume. Maybe you can sell it. You know, so um, that's that's something that you may want to consider. Uh, then another thing is the opposite of selling is buying. People would be tempted to buy things on credit. Yes, it may not save you money this this month, but just be on guard. Some people will say, oh, don't worry, I know you don't have money this month, but buy it on credit. Please avoid that. You want to save yourself the trouble that will come for next next month don't buy anything on credit wait so you can afford it maybe when you actually wait you realize that you don't need it and you don't have to buy it thank you thank you so much elikem so basically you should check what you are buying and also sell things you don't need you also avoid going into financial obligations which may harm your future thank you so much elikem so um i think we would take any other tips our speakers may have to navigate the, the month of January? Or maybe how you are navigating this January? How is this January going for you and then how are you navigating it? We, Adam, do you have any questions? Yeah, Dennis, um, I, I think your voice went low, but if I get what you were asking, how am I coping in January? Is that the question? 
Yeah, yeah, this this January. How are you? Oh, okay. Um, like Mimi said, like every other month, like for me, I have, I try to make sure that I, especially in January, to cut down a lot of my expenses. I mean, unnecessary ones at that. Okay, so I just, I won't just move and drive to anywhere at all, just for driving sake. But I'm always tying my movements to ensure that. They are bringing in something um, beneficial, other than my regular um, working to and fro, um, movement to and fro, the office and back home. Any other movement really has to be uh, necess- necessary. Other than that, it's not something that I do. I'm doing, even though fuel prices have come down a bit, but uh, fuel is still high. So, as much as possible. I cut out on the unwanted movements, and that way I, I realized that my fuel goes a little bit more. And then also, um, I think like Elikam said, I've eaten at home. Like, I, I'm not buying food out there a lot, yeah. So I'm eating at home. On top of it, I mean, this we are fasting this month, so the, the, the whole point of Eating uh, is, is is minimized in this month, so I think like Mimi Mimi said, I mean, if you are fasting in your church, I'll take advantage of it. <laughs> it helps physically and spiritually too. Uh-huh. So basically, for me, these are some of the things that we have been doing: uh, cutting out unwanted um, trips, and then also rather staying at uh, staying at home as much as possible and eating at home as much as possible, yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Adam. Mimi, we are 11 days into January. Uh, how, how are you coping with the family? Well, like I said, for me, I, I don't think I'm feeling the January heat. <laughs> I've already counted the days to receive my money, and it's getting closer, so I'm excited about that. But I, I don't think I'm feeling the heat. Me, yeah, I don't. I'm, I'm not like the December. I didn't really chill like that. Number one. <laughs> number two is that I I don't plan on making any other major expenses this month. So whatever is left, the few expenses here and there, I think I'm comfortable um, enough to make it. And as I said, I have a few days to be reloaded. And so the future is bright. Thank you so much. Thank you. Elikan, how are you coping with yours? Well, for me, the January is going fast because I'm on break. School is on break, so January is going very, very fast. I'm not in a hurry for this break to be over. It should slow down for me small. Uh, uh, so uh, that's, that's my take. Another thing that I've also been doing now is, uh, you know, still spending time with friends um, during this break. What's helped is, yes, I'll still have to go out to go for dinner. But before I leave the house, I'll drink my alcohol at home. Because I, I, when I was doing grocery shopping, the first thing I put in the car was the beer. You understand? So um, that's the spirits and all that. I do my own mix at home. Drink it, pick a, as the boys will say, pick a level before I leave home so that the appetite is ready by the time it's, um, I have to eat, you understand? So that's something that can uh, help. Um, just basically just chilling with guys at home. And that's and th- these are some of the times when I value investing in certain things. Like if for guys, you know this, you invest in a PlayStation or an Xbox, you know, something that people can come home and you know, surround you, just play with uh, all the time. You won't play it all the time. You can lend it to each other. You can share your money to pay, to buy it. But it's, it's an investment that's paying off over time. And then when I do get bored, to so just call people so that I don't necessarily always have to go out to have fun. Just phone conversations. Uh, we we'll, we'll save a lot on the transportation or, and, um, and then the cost of buying drinks outside. And also, even when I do go out and I'm in a bar and I have to drink, I get one draft beer. You know, that one, the, the mug is bigger, you understand? And then I can nurse it the whole night. 
for the same six dollars and then the instead of a cocktail that's like 40 dollars you see in the cocktail you have to buy two see your mind for day anyway so yeah that's these are some of the strategies that i'm doing and just every day that i don't spend money i do a little bit of celebration like i'm just happy with myself that today money didn't leave my my card you know and i think it's 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 helping to condition my mind yeah that's wonderful thank you so much Elikan. So I think we can all agree that one message we got from all this discussion is that we should focus more on our needs than our wants. And it's really important that we cut down our cost to make sure we are not overwhelmed during January. Um, Adam, do you have any last thoughts for our audience? Oh, yeah. Um, I think I said this earlier for those who just joined in. Um, for us not to repeat this whole 61 days in January, 100 days in January challenge all the time, I think it's a good thing that now that we are in January 2023, we start planning for January 2024. Right now, when you receive your salary for this month, let's put some aside towards December. I, I mean, we already mentioned last week in our as in our discussion one of the goals i think elikem's goal is for him to be able to come and get himself this december god willing so we are already preparing for 30 december 2023 so i think you should start now and not wait till the end of the year and then be be, be found wanting and then incur expenses that um are way outside of your budget. So let's start now, put money aside towards that. And are there any major um, expenses you think will crop up next year, January? Let's start putting something aside for it because as as you do that little by little, um, you are definitely be able to um, reach out to the, the target that you are looking at and it will be easier for you if you do it one step at a time every month, put something aside, yeah. Thank you so much, Adam. So it's never too late to make things right. Um, Elikem. Yeah, well, um, so this this is a bit away from this discussion, just uh, an announcement, just general housekeeping. Uh, we've, we've, pu- we've posted our rec- recordings of our conversations on our podcast and our YouTube. So just go on YouTube and search for um, money convos. Uh, there are some songs that are there that have the title "Money Convos." So we are like the second or th- we are the third or fourth answer. So you may just scroll a little. Alternatively, look at um, uh, the Money Convos profile on Twitter. There's a link tree link there. You click on it, and it will take you to how you can access the various um, episodes that you want. We'll be posting twice a week, so just um, every Sunday and either Thursday or Friday. Sunday is for older sessions and the Thursday or Friday for the more recent ones. So just stay tuned for that. Go subscribe, go follow, go uh, tell people about it and we will have another exciting thing coming your way very soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elikem. So I would like to say a big thank you to everyone who joined me to listen to this week's edition. We've um, digested a lot and we hope you too some notes to help you survive the month of January. A uh, um, gentle reminder that you can also check out Investment Friend on Instagram. If you're a lady and you want tailored investment advice, you should. You can also um, follow our social media platforms on Twitter and Instagram. And also, as Elikem said, you can check out our podcast and listen to them at your own convenience. So I would like to thank everyone for joining the conversation. I hope you join us next week for we have something exciting coming your way and we would love to see you around. Thank you very much, Adam, Lily, and Lincoln. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you also, Dennis, um, for hosting today's session. And uh, I think it's been a wonderful time. Elikem. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, good good one there. Dennis is an intern. He's brought a lot of traction in the work that we do. So. A lot of credit for getting the um, the podcast up and running. He found someone for us. Kudos to Dennis. All right.
Uh, and I think is Douglas who referred Dennis to uh, see. So kudos to Douglas too. All right. Yeah, uh, Douglas is in the audience. Thank you, Douglas, and thank you everyone who has been following us so far. Uh, we are grateful, and uh, I think we'll meet again next week for another interesting discussion. Thank you all. Good night, good afternoon, wherever you are. Good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs>